The 2022 World Figure Skating Championship starts on Monday. And honestly, everyone, I cannot remember the last time I was so excited about a world. And the reason for this being is that three out of the four disciplines, that's pairs, ladies, and men are wide open. Anyone that shows up in France, anyone that delivers, anyone that comes to play has a chance of getting that title, making it to the podium, making it to top five. I feel like for the past maybe six years, figure skating has been such a set um, sport. We knew beforehand exactly who the tops were going to be, who the winners were going to be. And although that has its own level of excitement, it did take something away from the sport for me. You know, that competitive drive, that sitting on the edge of your seat, that not knowing. And I feel like this world is the first time we're going to have that in a long time. So, I wanted to try my hand at a little bit of prediction on what I think the outcome for this world will be. And I want to start with the men. So with heavy hitters like Yuzu Hanyu, Nathan Chen, um, Boyan Jen, um, Mikhail Kulyada sitting out, the men's title is definitely, definitely up for the taking. And while I think realistically the, the new men's champion will be Japan's Yuma Kagiyama, I'm still going to go with what I hope happens at Worlds this year. So coming in first, I definitely hope my baby Shoma Uno finally puts it together. I hope he has two clean skates and the judges take into account not just his jump, but his overall skating, the tension in his arm, his back, his knee bend, his music interpretation. I feel like if he can have two clean skate, a short and a long, combined with him as a package skater, he should be able to win the title for the first time ever. Um, with Shoma being first, I definitely see Yuma Kagiyama coming in there winning the silver. Again, he's still a junior level skater in terms of skating skill. But when it comes to jump, he really has some of the most beautiful jumps in men's today. And then rounding off my podium is my baby Cha Hyun Wa. Really good season for Cha. Again, a complete package skater. He doesn't have the technical, you know, jumping abilities as some of the other men in the field, but spin, skating skills, musicality, program component, everything that makes skating a whole and complete sport, Cha comes with. And I really hope that the judges award him as a whole package skater. So I definitely have Cha on my podium. Then rounding up the rest, I definitely think if he can get his jumps down, Daniel Grasso can definitely finish in fourth and maybe even medal if one of the other top men do not deliver that like they're supposed to. Again, Grasso's style of skating is not really my favorite, mostly because they're isn't much skating, but he does have the technical power. He does have the jumps. And if he does a full quad long program, it's possible that he may just medal. But at the very least, I see him in fourth place. I'm putting Vincent in fifth. I have Vincent Zo off the podium for one simple reason. I feel like the judges are going to hit him hard with the under rotation. As we know in skating, the only people who do not get their under rotation, their pre-rotation call, are the Iteri girls. Unfortunately, Vincent is not an Iteri girl. An Iteri girl or an Iteri boy. Vincent is not an Iteri girl or an Iteri boy, so I think the judges are going to go hard on him and call his under rotation. Rounding off the top six, I see a um, Maurice um, Kitalash really. I don't understand why the judges keep placing Maurice so well. I do understand why the judges keep placing Maurice so high because he's an a 30 skater and he gets the 30 bonus. But honestly speaking, his jumps make no sense. 
it, it makes no sense. But I definitely see him in the top six. If he stays on his feet, I definitely see the judges giving him the GOE and PC that he needs to be in the top six. Hell, if the other skaters don't perform, Maurice might just decide that he wants to sneak in there. And he might even medal. Um, then in seventh place, I see new U.S. male skater Ilya Malinin making it into the top seven. He's still very much a junior, but he's a skater that I feel like if they really put the energy into him, he could be a full package skater. He's got musicality. He's got ice presence. He plays to the audience. Very good looking kid. And he's got the quad power. But I do wish that his team would reel him back a little on the quad. Because I feel like if he does too much, he may not make it to reach his full potential. But I have a lot, a lot of like hope for where Ilya could go in the future. Coming in in eighth, I have Keegan Messing. Love Keegan. Great guy. Um, still wish we had gotten to see him skate in those white ladies skating boots, but Keegan, Keegan, you know, Keegan is a great guy all around. Hopefully he'll have a really good competition here, finish in eighth place, and hopefully Canada can maintain their two spots, um, for men. Ninth place, one of my favorite skaters, Matteo, it's, um, um, Riso beautiful skater not always the best program but when he has the right program and he can land his technical component the rest of it just shine then following Maurizio, we have um Denis Vasiliev again another skater that I just love why because he loves skating and he in he allows us to fully enjoy skating as it was meant to be. Beautiful understanding of the music. Beautiful spin. Again, another skater that I adore, Kevin Amos. He has had a really, really rough Olympic year. But I really wish that he can come out here for Worlds and give us the program that only he can deliver. With the musicality, with the footworks, with the interpretation, with... You know, with the passion that only Kevin Amos can give us. Again, another beautifully round skater that's just a little short on the jump. Um, in 12th place, I'm putting Adam Fa, the other Frenchman. I really like Adam. I feel like he's a little all over the place. He's like a little firecracker. You never know what you're going to get with Adam. But I see a lot of potential with him. I just think he hasn't found the right packaging yet. He hasn't found the right coaching team. So I, I'm looking forward to see what Adam will do. In 13th place, I have I had um Kari Mura, but he's not gonna be there anymore because he's been replaced um with Tomoki. Um, I'm sorry, he's been replaced. Um, I forgot with who he was replaced with, but he's not going to be there. So I now think there is a chance that Japan could actually have a podium sweep because they have just taken out Kaori and um, they have just taken out and they're putting in um, Kazuki Tomono. Oh my God. So now I'm thinking there is a possibility for Japan to have a sweep in men. Or at the very least, I can totally, totally see um, Tomono in, in fourth place. So, okay. So I'm going to have to re, re coordinate my thinking. But to finish it up, I'm seeing Cadman on um, Polkinen in 14th place. And then I'm seeing Roman Sadowski in 15th place. My dark horse, whom I would love to see make the top 10, but it's probably not likely, is of course Donovan Carrillo. I would love to see Donovan Carrillo make it into the top 10, although I don't really think that's going to happen. But at the end, I just feel like men is such a wide open field like the other discipline, and I cannot wait to see who comes and delivers. You guys let me know what you think of my prediction. Leave me a comment below.